90s X-Men animated series, season 4 episodes 14 and 15, Bloodlines, and Lotus and the Steel Thoughts. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these two episodes. Uh, another two episodes I absolutely love. So, the top link in the description box allows you to donate to the SAC After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And I put a collection of my favorite Wolverine solo stories up behind me since. Lotus and the Steel is indeed a very solid Wolverine solo story. So, let's dive in to Bloodlines. So, yeah, at the start we're told, you know, things are so bad that some mutants have to be escorted to school. And this is something that actually did happen in the 60s. You know, a number of African-American kids, yeah, they needed escort, you know, yeah, I, uh, military escort, some, yeah, to in order to, to safely get to school. And I appreciate, like, the Friends of Humanity leaders are straight up wearing, like, something very re strongly resembling KKK hoods. And, uh, yeah, we again see this obsession that the Friends of Humanity have with your, you know, family line and the, the supposed purity of it. And Wolverine does not like Halloween because mutants don't get to just go back to their lives the rest of the year. And, yeah, you can really appreciate his perspective and yeah nightcrawler shows up again very cool only the second time we've seen him and yeah like like Lindsay Ellis pointed out in at least one of her videos on the show yeah he is unbearably preachy on this show and you know, hearing him talk about, you know, like basically saying, you know, you have to be meek. It's, you know, just, I, I can't hear that anymore and not think about how, you know, a number of conservatives are finally being honest and saying that they can't stand woke Jesus. Which, it's just, it's like, I've I've been saying for years, you get one. You, you can be, you can say that you're Christian if you actually follow the teachings, or you can say that, you know, people should live this really hard, right kind of way of living, but claiming, claiming to be Christian, claiming to be Christian and also preaching these values that are so counter to Christianity, to, to Jesus' teachings, the 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 hypocrisy is some of what bothers me the most about that you know i have a number of other issues with christianity but like if you're at least willing to live the way that it you know that your ancestors burnt people on the stake for not doing you know that's at least something mystique gets an epic intro stepping out of the the darkness and just the way the light just fantastic really really well done and yeah creed actually uses gas as an attack in order to wipe out a group of human beings that he feels are inferior to him it could not, like, literally, he is a Nazi, you know, it, it could not be any more explicit, like, again, I don't think they're allowed to say, to, to identify a villain as a Nazi on a kid show in, in the 90s, on, on, like, you know, this cartoon kind of thing, you know, but this is as explicit as they could possibly get, and... I appreciate Jubilee acknowledging that this is very soap opera 
like everyone's related to Mystique in in some way. That's an exaggeration, but nevertheless. And yeah, I quite like Nightcrawler and Mystique talking and you know, she claims that she's just motivated by money, but not long after it becomes clear, no, it's just like she had a difficult time, you know, making, you know, she was, she lived a very uncertain life. There were a lot of dangers towards her. When she was rich, she was protected against a lot of those. So it's not that she's greedy, it's that she's afraid. And that is usually the case when you know, yeah, there are some women who, you know, they're they're driven by, you know, they, they make choices in part based on what can secure them more money. And, you know, it's always, I, I again, you know, I don't think anybody should be driven by a desire for money. I've just explained why the, you know, how it is for, for a number of women. What I find fascinating is there are a lot of conservatives who are like, oh, you know, money's the most important thing in the world, you know, the, the most rich person is the best person, but then the moment that women do certain things to get a lot of money, suddenly it's bad, which, like, a lot of these guys aren't even good at hiding how misogynistic they are. They just don't want women to have money. They don't want women to have financial security. Now, let's see. Yeah, and you know, Mystique points out she's an outcast even among mutants. No one trusts her. And you know, after she you know, she's she's trying to you know, it's in part she she ha feels some some self-hatred. So she's trying to protect others from her, you know. But after all that, she still, you know, she takes a bullet to protect Nightcrawler. And we get a brief, we see a little more of the flashback as she gives up Nightcrawler. And we see she is crying. You know, she did not want to have to give him up. And the point is made that the Friends of Humanity are arrested for property damage, but not for violence against human beings and sadly that is very true that's happened a lot of you know yeah and the friends of humanity um, elders was that what they were the, the council you know they're they're not happy with how Creed handled it they you know they they airdrop him by his his father and yeah you know that's it's definitely you know it's one of those things like that is a very harsh like come up and kind of thing for a kids show but he's had his chance you know he really he keeps choosing this you know he he could just accept okay you know i'm related to a mutant maybe i should st try to stop hating mutants you know, but no, he keeps trying to commit violence against innocent mutants just so he can feel better. You know, and it's the, the episode makes it very clear it is just about his feelings. It's not that he actually thinks they're a threat. So, so yeah, you know, Creed Sr. walking up to him, come to Papa, just, yeah, really, really like chilling but also just yeah like if anybody on this show has has earned being alone with Sabretooth yeah Lotus and the Steel so yeah we get some more Wolverine backstory and yeah as already mentioned excellent Wolverine solo story I, I hope that the MCU can do some stuff like this because it really is like some of the books and some of the episodes of the show really nail like Wolverine can be so cool when he's part of a team 
doesn't have it doesn't even have to be the X Men. It can be you know various teams, but a lot of the best stories about him are the the these solo stories where he's completely on his own and you know he's maybe dealing with you know maybe decades ago he was dealing with this guy and now the guy is back and Wolverine has to deal with it kind of thing you know and sometimes it even has this thing of Wolverine is tired of all this violence he just wants to live a peaceful life but that's just not you know he almost never gets that there's a in in this episode he has an excellent line where he says it never ends you know it really is so so yeah really appreciate them them doing this you know the the let's see um so the the Let's see. The um Yeah, you know, so yeah, he goes to Japan as in, in this episode as he does in some of the comics and yeah, I was I was hoping we'd get the Silver Samurai story. So or or one of those at least. I, I feel like there's other Silver Samurai stories in the comics, but I have to admit it has been a long time since I read about Silver Samurai, but yeah, you know, and and it is this thing of, you know, it's not 100% like there is definitely part of the part of the reason that there are several stories where Wolverine goes from the West to Japan, you know, here in the West we do have a fascination with the, you know. The, yeah, these these some of these Eastern countries, East Asian countries, and yeah, this thing of like samurai, you know, samurai stories and such, and you know, like the episode itself is like somewhat like Seven Samurai. It's just that the the all the training and such happens kind of concurrent with Wolverine being there not not quite because you know he he says one or two encouraging things and he joins in the fight at the end but it's not quite but but I do quite appreciate the the point made that you know what was it like peace means knowing your purpose you know it's not peace is not always nonviolence and yeah, always love seeing guerrilla tactics and yeah, you know, the various, you know, they're, they're like hitting the, you know, motorcycle gang on, you know, with these like wooden, um, yeah, you know, smacking into them and they, you know, they drop a bunch of fish on them. There's like several pits that they get the the gang members to fall into. There's like a, a dam that they use, <laughs> and for for kids watching who might not have picked up on it from the visual, they even have the the kid spell you know the the son spell out, or the the yeah brother whatever. See. Even pigs turn their nose up at him. <laughs> Did the was there like an early draft and someone was like, I don't know, are the kids gonna get it from just the visual? We we should probably spell it out as well. But yeah, um, yeah, the the rare Wolverine story that actually has somewhat of a happy ending. You know, he did manage to stop Silver Samurai and the gang. And I quite appreciate the the tactical element. You know, he Wolverine realizes, oh, Silver Samurai is always attacking you from behind. So if I do a you know, what is it called? Not backflip. Whatever. If I jump backwards and then attack, you know, I'll be able to to hit him. You know didn't need to see two episodes in a row that both had 
one teleporter each, but I don't mind it. You know, it's the, with the live action movies, like eventually they just started having almost every movie had at least one teleporter. Which is, you know, it's a cool power and it works really well in movies. I think that might be about. I will say, as far as the live action movies go, Logan did come close to feeling like. I just. I think some of the action gets so big that it doesn't feel like a focused Wolverine centric comic story. And I think that is in part the expectations for big blockbusters. And I, I've said in, in an earlier video on this show, but uh, it bears repeating, the way I hope that they'll do Wolverine once uh, he is in the MCU, and, you know, he is coming, um, Deadpool 3, you know, it, it, currently the, the production is, you know, paused because of the sag after Strikers, you know, but eventually, hopefully, the strike will lead to much better conditions for writers and actors. But but yeah, once that has, you know, yeah, that movie is going to introduce, and it's even um, Hugh Jackman, you know, once he's introduced into the MCU, I feel like something that would make a lot of sense is if they do an MCU, a, a Disney Plus based MCU miniseries, the way that they've been, you know, so like your WandaVisions, uh, Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, um, yeah, these, these various, you know, and I think if they did, if they did it as, um, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the word, um, but if they do as one of those shows where, yeah, and anthology, if they do it as anthology where each episode is its own Wolverine story and you can set them in different decades, different places around the world and, and such, and, you know, maybe some framing device or something, but I... I I think it would be great to have just, because also the format, if you have like 40 or 50 minutes to one Wolverine story, that really works well for making it focused, not, you know, each of these movies, like I think the shortest is probably around 90 minutes, you know, it's just, it leads to an expectation that it has to be bigger. It can't just be one of these solo stories. And I'm thinking, can I come up with the title? Let's see. I'm trying to think of... Um, hmm... Yeah, um, that is, yeah, that is it for this one. So, yeah, uh, catch you again tomorrow, where we will be talking about Weapon X Lives, Lies and Videotape, which is an excellent title, and have yourself a Morlock Little Xmas. So, yeah, catch you again tomorrow, make my Marvel.